Hello everyone, welcome to English Mirror. Today, in this video, let's look into the British history in the 1990s. The 80s was undoubtedly the decade of Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, who successfully handled issues like the miners' strike and led Britain to an era of prosperity. The 90s, though so Thatcher's fall from glory, the firmness she demonstrated in the previous decade was interpreted as stubbornness in the next. It was also the decade that witnessed giant leaps being taken in the field of communication and information technology. The world would never be the same again once it was invaded by the ubiquitous mobile phone and the internet. The Thatcher government had promised to reform the system of taxation known as rates, which had been in practice since the 17th century. According to this system, people had to pay a levy on property which was calculated on the estimated rental value of their homes. These domestic rates were unpopular and were seen by many as a discriminatory way of raising revenue for local councils. One of the election promises of the Thatcher government had been to change the system of taxation. As a result, a new tax known as the community charge was introduced. According to this, every adult had to pay a fixed rate decided by their local authority. This tax was extremely unpopular as even students and the unemployed had to pay 20%. As it was a per head tax, some large families occupying small houses had to pay a lot of money. It was increasingly seen as a measure to protect the interests of the rich by shifting the burden of meeting expenses onto the poor. This dissatisfaction with the community charge gave rise to protests known as the Paul Tax Rights against the Thatcher government. The biggest protest took place in central London on 31st March 1990, just before the tax would come into effect in England and Wales. This right was largely responsible for undermining Thatcher's popularity and paved the way to her eventual resignation in November 1990. One of the first things Thatcher's conservative successor, John Major, did on assuming office was to abolish the unpopular tax. Instead, he introduced the council tax in 1992. The council tax was similar to the rate system, but with a difference. The tax was levied according to the capital value of the property rather than on the notional rental value of the property. Another concession was that households with only one occupant were entitled to a 25% discount. Apart from handling the problems of taxation that he had inherited from his predecessor, Major found himself at the helm when Britain was involved in the Gulf War. On 2nd August 1990, Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein occupied Kuwait, leading to the First Gulf War. This triggered international disapproval and the UN brought immediate economic sanctions against Iraq. 
An array of nations joined the condition against Iraq and forces were sent from the US, Saudi Arabia, the UK and Egypt. An important offshoot of the Gulf War was the introduction of live news telecasts from the war front. CNN, the US news network, was primarily responsible for this. The coalition forces won the war and successfully liberated Kuwait. Major steered the Conservative Party through yet another victory in the 1992 election and continued in the office till 1997, when the Conservatives suffered their worst general election defeat in over 150 years. Promising a classless society and headed by a dynamic young leader, Tony Blair, the Labour Party swept the polls in 1997 and came to power after 18 years. Blair's government offered referendums on the devolution of political power to Wales and Scotland. Both voted for home rule. This was one of the most important socio-political developments of the time. Another major political development was the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in 1998 between the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland, including a multi-party agreement by most of Northern Ireland's political parties. This paved the way for peace after years of unrest. The devolution of powers allowed these regions to mostly govern themselves. However, the British Parliament retains powers related to the constitution, defence, foreign policy, immigration and so on. A sense of optimism seemed to pervade the 1990s. An important labour achievement was the introduction of minimum wage and the turning around of government investment in public services. The opening of the Channel Tunnel in May 1994, connecting Foxton in Kent with Cockles near Cullings, was a result of a very big Anglo-French project. It has the longest undersea portion of any tunnel in the world, with a total length of about 38 kilometers. The channel carries high-speed Eurostar passenger trains, as well as a shuttle for passenger and freight vehicles. It is interesting to note that in a changing world, there are still some things that defy time. The Church of England is one such institution. Conceived during the Reformation period and established by Queen Elizabeth I through her Anglican settlement, the Church of England still stands as a symbol of religious and political authority. The monarch of England still remains the supreme governor of the church. The coronation services of the kings and queens of England are conducted as they have always been by the church. The crown itself is placed on the head of a new monarch by the Archbishop of Canterbury. One major change that took place in the 1990s was the ordaining of women priests for the first time in 1994. Towards the end of the 20th century, many were of the opinion that the church had drifted to the margins of society. Regular church attendance was observed to have declined steadily in the last century. The entire membership of all Anglican churches comprises only about 14% of the adult population. It was also discovered that there were 
more Roman Catholics than Anglicans in the United Kingdom. England is only a part of the United Kingdom, which also comprises Scotland, which is strongly Presbyterian, Wales, which is mostly non-conformist, and Northern Ireland, which is very much Roman Catholic. Nevertheless, the surveys of sociologists have discovered that most people have continued to believe in God and have gone to church in times of joy and crisis. The Church of England continues to demand public respect and is the beneficiary of a bench in the House of Lords. Britain yielded Hong Kong, its most successful modern colony, to the government of China on the night of 30th June 1997. The much-awaited handover from a capitalist to a communist state was carried out smoothly. The then Chinese president, Jiang Zemin, committed his country to allow Hong Kong to develop its democratic system and retain its religious freedom. As far as the local currency was concerned, Hong Kong retained the Hong Kong dollar. The strained relationship between Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, and his wife, Princess Diana, culminated in their divorce in August 1996 after a lot of public mudslinging. In the midst of active speculation about Charles' remarriage to Camilla Parker Bowles, the world received the shocking news of Diana's death in a car crash in Paris on 31st August 1997. Diana was extremely popular among the people and had always been under a great deal of media attention. Her sudden death led to an outpouring of public displays of grief, the like of which had never been seen before in British society. Internationally, the 1990s was an eventful decade. From 1991, the USSR ceased to exist after all its constituent republics declared themselves independent. This brought an end to the tension created by the Cold War. Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev announced his resignation in an address to his nation on the night of 25th December 1991. Soon after his declaration, the flag of the Soviet Union was lowered from the Kremlin for the last time and was replaced by the Russian tricolor, bringing to an end nearly 70 years of the existence of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The new Russian Federation was headed by Boris Yel. In the field of science, great strides continued to take place. Dolly the sheep became the first mammal to be successfully cloned. This was achieved by the Roslyn Institute in Scotland and announced to the public in February 1997. The environment continued to be a cause for anxiety in the 90s. NGOs like Greenpeace were dedicated to creating awareness about our environment. The environment was an issue even at the United Nations, which formed the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, to discuss the ways and means of reducing our carbon footprint. The 90s was a revolutionary decade for digital technology. The World Wide Web was invented by the English scientist Tim Berners-Lee in 1989 and was made available to the public in 1991. When it was introduced, only a few people used online services. 
But by 2001, access to the internet through the World Wide Web became widespread. Individual computers and cell phones were slowly making their presence felt. Email was rapidly becoming a popular means of communication and was easily available after Microsoft acquired the widespread Hotmail webmail service. The introduction of smaller satellite dishes gave people the opportunity of choosing from up to 500 television channels. This opened up a world of virtually unlimited entertainment. The first MP3 player, the MP Man, was released in 1998. Portable CD players became a part of the youth culture of the 90s. Digital cameras began gaining popularity in the 90s. Slowly but gradually, elbowing film cameras out of existence. Pages were popular but were soon replaced by mobile phones. As the 90s drew to an end, the world was caught in the grip of pre-millennium anxieties. There was quite a bit of panic regarding what was popularly known as the Y2K problem. Most software till then had been programmed such that they used only the last two digits of a year when indicating the date. Programmers speculated that when the date rolled to 00, zero in the new millennium, it would cause massive software and hardware failures, triggering major catastrophes in a world heavily dependent on computers. Governments, industries and technologists worked feverishly to allay the crisis. This fear ultimately proved to be unfounded. The youth culture of the 90s saw an increasing trend in body piercing and tattoos. The term millennials or Generation Y was used to describe those born in the 1980s and early 1990s. Some demographers refer to those born after 1995 as Generation Z. Feminism received a shot in the arm in this decade. 1992 was recognized as the year of the woman after a record number of women were elected to high office in the US. Many countries had women presidents and prime ministers, including Benazir Bhutto in Pakistan, Khalida Zia in Bangladesh, and Mary Robinson in Ireland. The music group in the Spice Girls popularized the phrase girl power. An offshoot of imperialism was the spreading of the English language around the world. This resulted in the appearance of writers from Britain's former colonies such as V.S. Naipaul and Derek Walcott from the Caribbean, Doris Lessing, Wale Soinga, Nadine Godimer, Chinua Achibe, and Ben Okri from Africa, and several writers from India, such as R.K. Narayan, Raja Rao, Salman Rushdie, Anida Deshai, Vikram Seth, and Amidav Ghosh, to mention just a few. Some of the outstanding novels of the 90s are the first three books of the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling, Bridget Jones, Diary by Helen Fielding, and Possession by A.S. Byte. Across the Atlantic, novels such as Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton and A Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin were published. The Booker Prize was won by the Sri Lankan Canadian Michael Ondaji for his novel The English Patient in 1992 and by the Indian author Arunthati Roy for The God of Small Things in 1997. 
Some of the most popular television shows of this decade were Full House, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, The Wonder Years, Friends, and That 70s Show. Although these were American sitcoms, they were popular all over the world. Many iconic films were produced in the 90s, including Pretty Woman, Jurassic Park, Mrs. Doubtfire, Schindler's List, The Lion King, Forrest Gump, Titanic, Pulp Fiction, and The Sixth Sense. The 1990s saw a boom in video games as quality improved and handheld gaming devices became common at home. Both children and adults were addicted to popular games such as Pokemon, Super Mario 64, Sonic the Hedgehog, Street Fighter 2, Doom, the Tomb Raider series and the Final Fantasy series. Thank you for watching Inglet Mirror. If you like this video, please share and subscribe.